So you decide to take the dive into digital art and use Photoshop. If you're new to this program, everything just doesn't feel right when you first start. Photoshop is not an intuitive program, but luckily for you, you have me. Hey, what's up y'all? Welcome back to The Art Mentor. My name is Sean. I'm a better art teacher and freelance artist. And today I'm gonna give you a bulletproof guide so that you can start digitally painting today, right now. Now, before you begin, what you're gonna need, of course, is a drawing tablet, because simply put, if you try and draw with your mouse, you're not gonna be able to do much at all. For this video, I'm gonna be using this bad boy right here. This is a Wacom Intuos Pro Medium. It's a standard drawing tablet. It's really awesome too, and it is my primary workhorse that I'm using right now. Now, before you go ahead and you start to use it, just so you know, you cannot just generally plug and play any of these from any brand out there. You generally have to go ahead onto their website and you have to install the drivers. Once you install the drivers, what you should see right here, as I'm showing you on screen, is you should see a separate application so that you can tweak some of the settings in it. And I'm gonna get into that later on in this video. So when you first set this up, if you do not see the little icon, like it shows you on my screen right now, for whatever brand tablet you're using, make sure that you just restart your computer because it just might not have detected it. Now let's get into what tools you need to use in order to start digitally painting today. So the Primo tool that you're gonna be using in order to draw in Photoshop is pretty much always gonna be the brush tool. This is located on the left-hand side, the little paintbrush icon. The keyboard shortcut for the brush tool is the letter B. So here I've made a new layer and I just wanna troubleshoot a few things that may happen or probably will happen to you when you first get started digitally painting. Making sure that you're using the brush and everything's gonna work fine with it. So first off, when you go ahead and use it, if it's producing this type of effect where no matter how hard you're pressing down, you're just getting the exact same line weight to it, there's a few things that you have to do to this and a few things to investigate. So up at the top here, you're gonna see this little target and pen icon. This is the pressure sensitivity for Photoshop. So definitely turn off that bad boy. Next, if this is still looking a little wonky to you, like as you're doing this, and you're getting this kind of weirdo effect. Go ahead into your pen tablet properties, like you can see here. And so here you can adjust how firm or how soft you would like your brush sensitivity to be. So basically you can go ahead and you can move this slider back and forth, up and down, and you can move it once and then come back here, give it a try, and then you can move it again and try it again until it feels pretty comfortable for you. However though, yes, as you can see right now as I'm doing this, everything is still 100% the same. This is where your brushes come into play. So to access the different types of brushes, you need to go ahead and you need to right click anywhere on your canvas. It's gonna pull up your brushes. So this particular brush I'm using right now, it does not have any type of pressure sensitivity built into it. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on this hard round button and you can hit enter for this to go away, or you can just click anywhere into the canvas area like that. So to check to see if your brush that you're using actually has any pressure sensitivity built into it, or to turn that on or off, here's how you do that. You're gonna need to access this palette right here, which is the brush settings. If you don't have this already shown, you just go to window and brush settings, and it'll pull up this. Now what you wanna do is make sure that these two options are checked for both shape dynamics, and this should be on pen pressure, as well as transfer. This is also supposed to be on pen pressure. Basically, shape dynamics will control how thin or thick it gets, and transfer is going to control how opaque or transparent it's going to be based on how hard you push down. Ah, so here we can see everything is working right. So this is generally the effect that you should get. And if it doesn't look like this again, just cycle back to the previous things that I mentioned. Now there are a few different options that you can also play with in your brush settings up on here. So up on the very, very top, you can change the blending modes on here. We'll talk about this in another video, but not today. You can also change the opacity. So if you wanna directly control how light or dark you're going, you can either do this one of two ways. You can first off, go ahead and click into here, and then this will again adjust based on what you're doing. Or you can easily just use the numbers on your keyboard. So you can go 10% would be one, 20% would be two, 30% would be three, so on and so forth. If you wanna go back to 100%, just hit zero. 
Now, another really awesome part about what makes Photoshop such a great program, and generally all digital art programs, is the ability to use custom brushes. So again, if you right click and you see all of your custom brushes, you're gonna have a pretty limited amount. And as you can see from mine right now, yeah, I've, I've got a lot. I've collected a lot over the years, okay? So my general advice for you as a new digital artist though, is to just get comfortable with using the hard round and the soft round brushes and then go ahead and invest into trying to find your own custom brushes. Now, my another big piece of advice for you is this, don't rely on custom brushes to do all the work for you. You still have to have a good amount of artistry in order to pull this off and make anything look good or else it just doesn't matter. So as you see me drawing here, you're gonna see me making my brush both bigger and smaller. There are two different ways that you can do this. The easiest way to get this one done is if your stylist actually has a wheel for you to turn it up and down, go ahead and use that. Like for me, on my Wacom, it's this little bad boy. The more that I spin this left or right, the bigger that it gets, as you can see right there. If you don't have that though, that's cool. Just go ahead and hit the open and close bracket keys. These are located directly next to P on your keyboard. Now to give you a really big power tip so that you can quickly access all of your custom brushes on the fly as you're painting, go ahead and map it to that little button that's gonna be on your stylus. Pretty much all pens have a little button that's gonna be located right here. And you can do this again in your tablet settings. So for me, it's right here. I can modify exactly what this button does as well as what the forward one does. I have two on mine. However, you may only have one. I do recommend that you do this though. Now let's learn about the brush tool's best friend for undoing all this stuff. So the sister tool to the brush tool in order for you to undo everything is the eraser tool. And you can access the eraser tool in a couple ways again. Over here on the left hand side, it's gonna be on the tool palette, the little eraser icon right there. You can also press the letter E on your keyboard. So the eraser tool functions just like the brush tool. You can go ahead and either use your stylus wheel or you can use the open and close brackets to make it bigger and smaller. And as long as you have the right layer selected, you can go ahead and just erase this out like you see me erasing this guy's ax right here. Oh no, he looks far less mighty now, right? Now another thing that you can do is you can utilize all of your custom brushes in order to also produce a certain effect. So you can right click and you can select a different one. So let me go ahead and select one that has a little bit more of a texture to it. So like this one right here. And here you can see I've gone ahead and I've selected a texture tool and I can actually use the eraser as such. Now you can also use this for fixing your mistakes. Next, let's talk about another way that you can and definitely should go about correcting all of your mistakes as you're going to be going about digitally painting because this is one of the best parts and you don't get this out of any traditional media. And that is the history palette. So it's generally gonna be located right up here. Now, depending on what your workspace looks like, this may or may not be contracted. Mine's generally always contracted. And you can go ahead and just click on this little icon with the three dots and a little arrow pointing up. And this will actually show me again, as you can see, I can click on each individual option and it will actually show you each individual state as you're doing it. You can go either forwards or yes, you can also go backwards in it, which you can see this happening as it's slowly erasing each part and then unerasing it right there. As a big power tip to you, generally speaking, the amount of history states, it's not going to be infinite, okay? So you can customize this, my friends, very easily just by going to edit and then the preferences and general. As you can see here, my history states right now is set to 50 and I find this to be really good. You can amp that up more. One little drawback to this I am gonna advise you against though, the more RAM your computer needs to use and therefore the more lag you may experience depending on the type of machine that you're currently working on. Now here's another really important aspect and palette that you need to be familiar with. Now let's talk about the wide world of colors, y'all. So over in the top right, you should see your color palette and it's generally going to be a little slider. You can go up and down in value, hue, saturation as well. You can also utilize the slider again in order to just go ahead and just swap to different colors that you see right here. So this is the general color palette. You can also quickly go ahead and grab colors by just clicking the swatches tab and this will bring you to this you can there's a whole bunch of preloaded things right here i'm going to tell you that generally speaking i like to just go ahead and manually pick all my colors however there's a lot of people that just like to save their own colors um, as you're going through your process and you're growing as a digital artist you're probably going to be tempted to do things like buying new color palettes or color wheels or buy swatches and y'all if you ever get tempted to do this please dissuade yourself from doing it because it's absolutely worthless there's no reason why you should be paying for this stuff 
up, you'll be able to just figure it out on your own. And it's a colossal waste of money. So as far as where your colors go when you're digitally painting, it's gonna be going in the tools palette at the lower left, you're gonna see two little boxes, okay? The top one is called the foreground color and the back one is called the background color. The reason why there are two of these, by the way, is because different tools like the gradient tool or the color mixer tool, they utilize both of these at the same time. I'm not gonna go over those in this video, but I will in the future. So to select any one of these, again, just go ahead and click on any one of them. And so if you wanna just default this back to black or white, you can hit D on your keyboard, or you can hit the little black and white icon right above. So let's say that I wanna go ahead and I wanna to start to paint some red up on here. Okay, so I've gone ahead, I've selected my regular hard round brush, and I can go ahead and I can just go ahead and start to, boom, paint some red. There it is right there. Now to swap your foreground and background color should you need to, very simple, my friends. All you need to do is hit the X button. This will be really convenient for you to swap between your foreground and background color. Let's say for example, later on when you learn about your gradient tool, you wanna to have a gradient from red to orange or orange to red, you can hit X and you'll see it swapping both in the color palette as well as in my foreground background colors on my tool palette. Now, let's say that when you're actually deep into this and you're in the middle of a painting, it's gonna be a pain for you to constantly have to come on over here and try and guess, hey, which, which blue is that? Uh, it's kind of dark, it's kind of light. I'm not really sure which one it is. Well, easy way to do this, my friend. So there's a built-in tool on here called the eyedropper tool. Over here on the left-hand side, it's gonna be this bad boy. It looks like a, a little turkey baser, okay? The keyboard shortcut for this is the letter I, by the way. Or the easiest way to do it is you can just hold Alt on your keyboard and you can go ahead and click and that will automatically select whatever color that you're using. So then you can very, very quickly and efficiently grab that color and keep painting it. Just like you see me doing it here. This is the easiest way in the world for you to go ahead and do this using any brush at any time at all. So this is the preferred way for y'all to do it. Now here's another really key feature that you should be familiar with as you're gonna go ahead and start digital painting. So let me talk to you about making selections and why they're really important in Photoshop and why I recommend that you do it and how you can utilize them best. So here is a sketch that I recently submitted to one of my clients. Now, if I submit this to a client right now, it's okay, it's not bad, but it's not great and it doesn't really help them understand things. I'm gonna utilize a specific set of tools called the lasso tools to make some selections and really punch this up. Let me show you how this works. So this is essentially going to take it from this to this, which makes this infinitely, infinitely better. In order for you to isolate areas of your artwork so it's very, very easy for you to launch into that and only work in specified areas, here is the tool you wanna to use. It's called the Lasso Tools. Over here, up on the top left, it's basically a little oval with, it looks like a little rope with the rope part hanging down. Uh, the keyboard shortcut for this is the letter L. So what the Lasso allows you to do is to go ahead and just quickly go ahead and base out an area base out a selection. So just like that. Now what this does is when I go ahead and switch to my brush tool here, it only allows me to paint into that area. And you can see I've made a new layer by the way, as I'm gonna go ahead and do this. So basically this prevents me from, ah, whoopsie, I can't go outside over here. I can't go over here. I can only paint within that one area. Now this is pretty typical here where I've gone ahead and I made a selection and my arm got tired or overall, like I made a mistake, like I do see I, I made a few little oopsies here. So let me teach you how to fix this, add to it and amend it. So if you wanna take away any portion of this, just go ahead and you're gonna hold Alt on your keyboard and that will allow you to make a selection that it will delete from. Let's say you wanna add to it though, like I do wanna get the rest of this character's body in this one singular selection. You wanna go ahead and hold Shift. And when you hold Shift, you can see a little plus icon turn up right next to the overall lasso icon as you're drawing. So now I'm gonna go ahead and use that plus and minus to go ahead and clean this up. So watch me do this. And there we go. Now I've made a full on selection with this. And now with using the brush tool, what I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna go ahead and grab some white and I'm gonna go ahead and slam this into that area right there. And you can see what this does is through my layers, it actually really masks them out and brings a lot of nice focus to it. And this would be something that I would find more acceptable for my client. Now, however though, I've got some really hard straight lines to do with this. And I'm just gonna tell you that the overall regular lasso tool, it's not really gonna be fun for me to go ahead and hold shift and try and do this. And my God, just hope that this is all gonna turn out straight. There's a better tool for doing this, my friends. 
So if you right click on the lasso tool, you're gonna to be able to see a couple other options. So for this, we're gonna first off choose the polygonal lasso, lasso tool. So what this does is every single time you click, it creates what's called an anchor point. And then you'll see it'll create a perfectly straight line to wherever you click next. So what I wanna do is I wanna use this in order to get the sword edge in there. And then you wanna eventually come back to where you started or you can also just double click and it will end and create your selection. So there we go right there. So now I'm gonna use that in order to get that in. And when you're done with the selection, by the way, just hit either Control D or Select Deselect in order to turn your selection off. So therefore you can go ahead and make new selections. This is how you can easily isolate and work only within certain areas of your artwork. Now here's another thing that you can do with it and to show you a little bit more about what the power of this tool is and why isolations are so important in Photoshop and digital painting, here we go. So here you can see that my background, even though my characters are really pushed forward here and it makes sense, the background here falls really, really flat. I wanna show you, hey, how did I do this to it? Now you can see you get a sense of depth, there's light coming in from the top, there's clearly some type of setting and background happening. These are two characters that are fighting in an arena. So here's how you're gonna get this one done. So now I'm gonna use my regular lasso tool here in order to, again, produce that nice lit effect that's coming from the top. I'm zoomed in a little bit. And what I'm gonna do here is just kind of outline a few areas that I want to show off here, that I want the light to be coming from and exposing some more things. I wanna go around some of these bigger rocks here to produce a different effect. So now I'm gonna use the soft round brush for this one. And I'm gonna use yeah, a pretty light one, in fact, like a, let's go almost white on this. And now it's only going to apply this in that area. So you can see as I'm doing this, this is gonna reveal out some of those like stalactites that are showing from my ceiling right there. And you can see that happening. Now, conversely, I'm also gonna do the same exact thing with this kind of stadium. So now here, I'm gonna use a darker color and this will allow me to darken up and push a lot of these nice foreground areas forward, especially on the sides. And this is a real powerful way for y'all to go ahead and bring some more oomph to your sketches, especially for those of you that wanna get into the professional realm of this, make sure everything looks nice and professional and punched up. And you can see me again, just using the soft round brush really lightly on this, just to give this effect. So this would be more appropriate for me, again, for what I would send to a client in order for them to approve and for me to go ahead and move on to my coloring. So this is the overall power of selections, the lasso tool, and why we need to use this. Now, a really critical thing that you need to know and get very comfortable with is how to maneuver around your canvas quickly. So let me give you some tips here. First off, in order to zoom into any part of your canvas, go ahead and hit Z or grab the zoom tool, which will be located on the lower left-hand side of your tools palette. You can hit Z. This will allow you to click and you can zoom in. You can hold Alt and you will zoom out as well. Now, the preferred way to do this is for you to go ahead and make sure that you have the scrubby zoom icon selected. Now, if y'all don't have this selected, that just means that something went a little crazy with your graphics card. You might need to update your graphics card as well because what you should be able to do is just go ahead and click and drag and be able to go in and out like this. This is the preferred way to do it. It's much, much easier than again going click, 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 in order to get into this guy's ear. As you're zoomed in, there's a really helpful tool that's generally always generated in Photoshop. It's called the Navigator Palette. So you can see it's gonna be up here in the top right. If you don't have this, go ahead and hit Window and Navigator for it to show up. Now, the great part is that with this, you can quickly click and drag around anywhere inside that red box right there. You'll be able to just quickly navigate to wherever you want. Now, when you're all the way in here, what you need to be able to do aside from using the navigator is to actually just go ahead and pan around. So to do this, you're gonna use the hand tool, which is right above the zoom tool. The keyboard shortcut for this is the letter H. But the premier way for you to do this and my personal way for you to do it is to either hold the space bar or even better than that, map your second uh, express key on your stylus pen to the letter H so that for me, when I click and hold my stylus pen, I actually activate the hand tool. And this allows me to very quickly go ahead, especially when I'm with a brush tool, I can move over here, I can draw, then I can click my stylus pen, move over here and continue to draw. This is the preferred method for you to go ahead and do this. Now, if you're zoomed in, like let's say I'm incredibly zoomed in, boom, I'm right here, whoa. And I wanna zoom all the way out to see how that's 
look and check myself, just hit control zero. You can do this by going to view and fit on screen. And then the last thing that you need to know is how do you quickly maneuver around this? Frequently what happens a lot of digital artists want to know, hey, how do I draw a straight line? Well, the very simple thing is that just like if you were gonna draw something on paper, you would rotate the paper or rotate yourself, right? Well, really easily, Rotate the canvas. Go ahead and use the rotate tool, which is if you right click on the hand icon, it's gonna be right there. The keyboard shortcut for it is the letter R, which I like to use a lot. And you click and drag, it'll allow you to quickly rotate it. So between all of these things, you can do whatever you need to to get out of the rotation, because it gets really obnoxious and you don't wanna keep it like that all the time. You go ahead and just hit escape. Now let's move on to some more essential knowledge. So my friends, now go forward, create some awesome work. And let me just, tell you, remind you of one major basic principle of digital art, which is this simply, my friends, is that digital art is not gonna do the work for you. Just because you bought the most expensive drawing tablet that you possibly could, just because you bought the most beast computer you possibly could, just because you paid the most for this program versus some other programs out there over the long term, does not mean that you are gonna be an A plus, triple A awesome artist. That's gonna take time, skill, and effort. So as I always say to all of my students, as I say to everybody that watches my channel, I wish you lots of luck, hard work, and achievement. So go and have fun with that. And hey, if you wanna get better at digital art and learn more about how to be a better artist and how to get art commissions, too, make sure that you go ahead and watch these videos right